Hello and welcome back to another episode of Taylor Time. Here today I have a special guest, Miss Keisha, with Kiki's Candies and Cakes. And I am so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So what are we going to be making today? So today we are making a reindeer unicorn cake, kind of festive Ooh. for the season. That's perfect. Yes. All right, what can we do to get started? Um, so to get started, we're gonna start with icing our cake first. Mm -hmm. I have just two eight inch round vanilla cakes mm -hmm. um, that I've made and I've kind of uh, frozen them because they seem to do better when they're frozen. Mm -hmm. um, and I have just regular American buttercream icing here. Mm -hmm. So before I get started icing my cake, I always take a little bit of the icing and eat it, just kidding. <laughs> I take a little bit of the icing and dab it on the bottom mm -hmm. just to keep the cake from sliding around. I've just had some accidents with that and I don't want to have any with this one. So we kind of just, that's our glue for the bottom, of course. Mm -hmm. So to get started, we are just gonna take our buttercream icing and I usually like to pipe a border of it around the outside of it. And this just kind of keeps my cake leveled. Now you don't have to pipe it, of course you know that. Um, some people just put the icing on, but for me this kind of keeps it leveled and then I can like fill it in a little later. Mm -hmm. So after I do that, I just kind of take my spatula. I don't know if you can see that well. Um, I just kind of take my spatula and kind of move it around lightly on the top of it um, as not to kind of press down the icing too much because you do want a good, I like a good cake to icing ratio in the middle of my cake. So I just kind of move that around a little bit and kind of level it. And then we're going to take our second cake and place that on top. And then I usually just kind of eyeball it just to make sure. And then pipe around the inside here, kind of just to fill any, any cracks around in there before I kind of icing the cake all over. Of course, we are going to just um, give it a crumb coat. And for, for people out there who don't know what a crumb coat is, could you explain that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. So a crumb coat is kind of just sealing in the crumbs um, so that when we go to um, give our final coat so that um, we don't have crumbs dragging all in our icing. Yeah. Because that wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> yeah, no. And for this cake, um, we're going to decorate the outside of it. So it kind of gives us a little leeway um, versus a cake that you know you wouldn't have to decorate the outside mm -hmm. that you couldn't kind of hide your mistakes yeah <laughs> um so as i'm um pulling the cake around pulling the icing around i'm just kind of making sure it's all even first i just kind of like to make sure that it's all evening even sometimes you can use a leveler i don't know if you use one of those sometimes taylor but kind of just to make sure but usually i can kind of eyeball it and mm -hmm. see um I like American buttercream. I like Swiss buttercream as well, but the American buttercream is kind of my go-to um, that I kind of use all the time, um, unless my customers recommend something different. But um, I usually ask what kind, what kind of icing they would like. So after I get my sides all done, then I usually take some and spread it on the top and again, this is just our crumb coat kind of sealing in our crumbs. So we don't want to put a whole, whole lot on there because of course you're going to drag the crumbs back into this icing as well. Usually, um, most of the time when I'm, when I am ice, when I'm doing my crumb coat, I use a different, um, bowl so that I don't drag the icings in my, in my good icing, yeah, I drag the crumbs in my good icing. Yeah, if you have a big bowl of icing and then you ruin it, you did all that hard work and then you ruin it with a bunch of crumbs. That's and right. It's really disappointing. It is, it is. So now I am just taking a scraper and just scraping around the sides of the cake. This kind of fills it in as well. Um, kind of fills in your cake as well, fills in any kind of cracks you have in there. and. While I'm doing that, I'm going to take this 
extra icing that I have that we talked about, I'm just gonna kind of scrape it on here, but usually I do put that in a bowl. Um, and see how it's kind of getting even there and um, straightening out and flattening out. And you can see, now sometimes, sometimes I'll make a, um, like a semi-naked cake and where, where um, the cake is showing. And sometimes, you know, um, I do those a lot for weddings, mm -hmm. um, a lot for rustic cakes. Um, you can, you can do the semi-naked or for people like me, believe it or not, I'm a baker who does not like a lot of icing. Really? Yes. <laughs> I'm not an icing person. I love it, but I just need to have enough. I don't like to have a lot. My sister's the same way. So this kind of cake is perfect for me. My daughter loves icing. So the thicker, the better for her. So after we do that, I'm going to now kind of get some of this icing off the top here and kind of make my edges as smooth as I can on the top. Now this cake is not gonna be covered up by a border. So if it's not covered up by a border, I usually try to get it as, get the edges on the top as good as I can. So to do that, we're gonna kind of use this sweeping method. And I usually just take it and sweep it very lightly on the edges and put my excess on my scraper. So I'm just gonna sweep it really lightly on the edge. As you can see, just a little bit comes off. Just try not to be real heavy handed with that and get that off. And I'm just gonna go lightly around my cake. And as you can see, the edges are, are coming together there, as I like to call it. And after we do that, we're gonna let the cake sit. I usually let it sit in the refrigerator for about 15, 20, 30 minutes, or depending on if I'm working on another cake or not, or until you go to touch it and none comes off on your hands, um, which is usually your, that's your, that's your sign that you know that your cake is ready. So now that we've got that all done, all nice and even and level there, as you can see in the middle, we filled in all the crumbs. And after we get that done, so next I would take it, put it in the refrigerator, like I said, for about 15, 20 minutes, or until you go to touch it and none comes off. But for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and finish icing. So we're gonna say that this came out of the, the freezer and it's ready to go for its final coat. Now, depending on what kind of cake I'm making, sometimes I'll do um, two to three coats. You know, if you wanted a thicker icing, but for me, who doesn't like icing, one coat is good. And then, like I said, we're gonna be covering this up so we can kind of, kind of, um, it'll cover up our, our little mistakes that we may make along the way. And this is just a regular vanilla cake with regular vanilla buttercream. Um, do you have a favorite kind of cake, Taylor? Um, I could, actually, I'd have to say vanilla cake mm -hmm. because it's delicious, it's simple, it's classic, and you can also pair it with like a bunch of other flavors like strawberry, orange, blueberry, so Yum. it's very versatile. You can basically do anything. You are so right about that. Now my favorite is strawberry, but I also like funfetti. Ooh, I like funfetti and strawberry is my favorite, but I also like vanilla. Um, if I just want cake, I just want, I love birthday cake. Mm -hmm. I love wedding cake. Of course I love cakes, but I love birthday cake. I love wedding cake. Um, usually when I go to a birthday or a wedding, that's the first thing I'm looking at is the cake. <laughs> and maybe that's just a baker thing in me, but that's usually one of the first things I'm looking at is the cake. I love wedding cakes, they're so pretty. I do too. There's yeah. a lot of different things you can yeah. do with that. Like I've seen like different marble cakes and like you were saying like the naked cakes as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So now we've got a coat around the sides there. I'm just gonna kind of smooth those out. And we may do another layer on this just because white icing does not hide as well as chocolate or different colors. Um, but I like to play around with colors when I'm doing my icing. Um, I really like to play around with colors, um, especially unique colors. What are some of the harder colors you find that are hardest to, to get? 
I'd have to say black and red. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'd have to say black and red all the way, mm -hmm. especially black because like, or if like a customer wants a vanilla icing, but they want like a black cake or whatever, a lot of times I'll usually have to like airbrush that rather mm -hmm. than making the actual icing black because it's hard to do and it's also, it's a lot of extra money, mm -hmm. a lot of extra food coloring, but then also food coloring, when you add too much, it tends mm -hmm. to alter the taste a lot yeah. and it's not very good. So. so navy blue is my heart color. I don't know why, but it's just, um, sometimes I can mix the colors to get it. Mm -hmm. Very rarely can I just find a navy blue color and get that natural, that true color. But navy blue is just difficult for me. Um, difficult, difficult for me to, to get. And I do like to try to get the colors that my customers like, mm -hmm. especially if it's a wedding or something like that. You know, you want to get the exact color mm -hmm. because you want to match that up. Okay, so again, we're going to go around the top and trying to get our edges just as smooth as possible. And as you can see, it's really coming together. And we're gonna put a little unicorn on her face um, with some little rosy cheeks. She's gonna have little reindeer ears. And I have um, done all of the uh, fondant. I've used fondant to do all of the little um, accessories for her. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes you can make homemade fondant. Sometimes you can okay. use store-bought. Um, homemade sometimes, depending on the season, I find in the summertime or when it's humid, is harder to uh, work with. But I really, um, some people shy away from using fondant. Um, I did it first, but now I just really, um, I don't mind at all. Um, because I think it, it's sturdier, it holds better, and for some cakes it just looks better. I'm just kind of cleaning up the edges here um, of our cake. We're just kind of cleaning up our edges a little bit. And there is our icing cake. We're going to add some flowers to her. We're going to add a little face to her. So now that we've got her all icing, um, I have some, I do have some ears for her. I have some eyes for her. Have some um, flowers for her hair. Um, so this is just a plain cake. I call it a blank palette. So we can just pretty much do whatever we want. Um, kind of customize her however we want. And so this is her nose, which I've made as a little heart. So we're just gonna center her nose there on the front. And then I'll know where her eyes should go once I get her nose on there. And there is her nose. And these are all fondant pieces that I've colored with uh, food coloring. Um, and like Taylor said, sometimes if you get too much food coloring, um, it's bitter, especially darker colors. Sometimes if you, um, so I try not to use, I try to use a concentrated food color um, so, that, so that it's not too bitter. And we've got to give her some lashes because she is a unicorn. Unicorns are very popular now. Yeah. Um, I know they had not been as popular in the past, but now my, my little granddaughter, she's four. Her name's Mackenzie and she loves unicorns. She loves princesses and she loves unicorns. I've seen a lot of unicorn cakes on Instagram mm -hmm. for sure. Like yeah. I like to watch like the little cake Instagram <laughs> reels <too>. and, <laughs> and see all the posts and stuff, get inspiration. Sometimes I'll get carried away and I'm like, yes. okay, you've been watching this too long. <laughs> but it's so interesting and it's inspiration and it's ideas and you know, I'm self-taught at baking so I kind of just, you know, use that for my inspiration. Okay, so here's her face. We're gonna have to give her a name, Taylor. Yes, we so, are. <laughs> <laughs> there's her face. So now we're gonna get her um, ears on. We're gonna get her ears on. She has reindeer ears and she has regular ears. So we're gonna give her both because 
it's festive and she's cute. All right. So let's see, let's get her ears centered on here. And sometimes you can use toothpicks or sticks or anything to kind of hold them in place. There's her little ears. To hold them in place um, because you don't want to be delivering a cake to someone and then you get there and everything slid off. Oh, she's coming along. <laughs> Should I put it behind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this good? Mm -hmm. All right. That's one of her little reindeer ears Taylor's put on for us. And I just have some regular um, straws in there mm -hmm. so that they will stand up. Um, the longer you leave them out, the harder they'll get. Um, and then I just have a little fondant on the back for backing so that, um, you know, they kind of don't fall off there. There she is. I love the pink. <laughs> It's a, it's a different kind of color pink. So now that we've got her ears on, we're going to start placing her flowers mm -hmm. and take, I'll do the vines if you want to put the flowers on her. Okay. So what I've done is just take some of this white buttercream and tint it green. And that's going to be kind of the vines for her flowers. And once we get the vines placed, then we'll kind of know where to place her little flowers. So I'm just going to start with like a little straight line. And then I, I just have just, like I said, regular green buttercream in there. And I'm just going to make a few vines there for her, for her flowers. And I just have a regular um, tip on there, just like a smaller tip. Sometimes you can use this tip to kind of draw, uh, draw on a cake which I'm not so good at. I don't have a steady hand, but that is one of my areas of weakness that I need to work on um, because I just love pretty writing on a cake. I think it makes it unique and different. I think, yeah, a lot of the orders I get like for birthday cakes or anniversaries or happy 50th birthday or stuff like that, like I have to be really careful. I have to practice a few times before I do it because writing on a cake is hard. It it's is. It's very hard. It's harder than people think. Isn't yeah, it? it is. All right. I think we've got some vines placed on here. We may get some more on there later, but we're going to let Taylor, if Taylor, if you will, go ahead and place her some flowers on there. And all I've done is take different colors of fondant and kind of just um, dime different colors of flowers to kind of um, match her little ears there. We have some pinks and there's some purples and some greens. There you go. She's got some pinks and some purples and some greens in there. I just love her little nose. I do too. I love the heart shape. Mm -hmm. I also love how customizable this cake is. Yeah. Like you can, like for birthdays or anything, like if, if someone really liked purple or pink or blue, mm -hmm. like you could do anything really. Or like it doesn't even have to be Christmas. You can make it Easter or right. Valentine's. She could or, be a princess yes. or, um, there you go. All right, Taylor. How many do you think I should do on here? Um, you can do as many as you like. You can fill her up with flowers if you like. I think these flowers are hibiscus. Um, the larger ones are hibiscus flowers. I love flowers. I really love those flowers. Um, they're just so pretty, especially when they bloom. Um, I think flowers are just gorgeous, all different kinds. Right, and they get one last good look. Oh, there she is. Do you think I should add any more anywhere? Yeah, you or? can add some more. All right. 
If you want to just fill her up at the top, you can. I like how Taylor has the flowers sitting up there so that you can see them. Um, any little girl would be so happy to get this little reindeer cake. Kind of make it nice. look like a bouquet. <laughs> like yes. Just like she's sprouting flowers. Very nice. We still haven't come up with a name for her yet. We have to give oh, her a name. Yeah. <laughs> Man, what do you think it should, it should start with? Um, I don't know. What do you think? There she is. I don't know. There's so many names, so much to choose from. Here, I'll put a few more on that okay. side. And then we're going to give her a few pearls mm -hmm. um, just to kind of make her girly. A little more girly. We have some pink pearls and I have some white pearls and we're going to give her some rosy cheeks because she's a reindeer. Ruby reindeer. I like ruby yes. reindeer. I like that name ruby. <laughs> oh very nice. So I'm going to give her some blush because um, our cheeks are probably cold because she's a reindeer and I just have some pink buttercream like I said, the, the possibilities are endless here. Um, so I just have some pink buttercream that we're going to give Ruby. I'm so happy she has a name now. Um, <laughs> that we're going to give Ruby to kind of um, signify that her little cheeks are cold. And you can just take a little spatula and kind of move in a circle motion there. Give her some little pink cheeks. We'll give her some pink ones on the other side. One of the things about buttercream that American buttercream that a lot of people don't like, I don't know how you feel about it, Taylor, is because it's cr a crusting buttercream. Mm -hmm. And that just means that if you leave it out for a while, it gets like a little thin crust on it, which works well for some things, but doesn't work well for other things. Swiss Moraine is a kind of softer buttercream and um, doesn't crust as much. And there are her little cheeks. How are they looking? See? All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, it goes perfect with the flowers <laughs> and the ears. All right, let's give Ruby some pearls. I'll do some pink pearls, Taylor, if you want to do some white ones. We're just going to spread them over and kind of pat them down. My floor will be full of pearls here. Um, we're just gonna give her little pearls, some little pearls on her head. Yeah, sweeping up sprinkles is <laughs> not fun, especially oh, when no. they're little ball sprinkles. Oh. So they go everywhere. Oh, yeah. And you find them later. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're all right. All right, Ruby, you are looking really pretty. You can also use a tweet these little baking tweezers here and kind of punch your pearls in there if you don't want them to be everywhere. That's a little more time consuming, so I just push them in there. <laughs> Looks great either way. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right. I think Ruby's all done. She is looking really pretty. I've got buttercream on her nose, mm -hmm. but she's looking really pretty. Taylor, what do you think? Oh my goodness. Oh, that looks so cute. Oh my goodness. There is Ruby Reindeer. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. This was a it. lot of fun. <laughs> yes, it was. The sprinkles, the flowers. I think, what's your favorite part about the cake? Oh, my favorite part are her cheeks. Really? What about you? I, I'd have to say the flowers. I feel like it just, <laughs> Like, it's just like, like, I don't know. <laughs> I like the flowers too. I like the flowers too. I think she's very festive yeah. for this time of year. Almost makes you not want to cut her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. This is a gorgeous unicorn cake. I love it so much. I love the colors too. This wouldn't be a Taylor Time episode without cutting into the cake. So are you ready to cut in and try some? I am ready. I am too. Sorry, Ruby. <laughs> Sorry, Ruby, but <laughs> I want to try some of this cake. All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Mmm, has a good mm. flavor. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. I love the buttercream. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vanilla is definitely one of my favorite <laughs> flavors. <laughs> Very good. This is delicious. Thank you. Of course. That means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after trying this delicious cake, I'm so glad you have me here. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.